Shadow and I are sitting on the edge of a deep, dark, black hole. The remains of a lava flow that occurred 30,000 years ago. And we're going to be passing the volcano from which this lava flowed from on our way to a Bortle II high elevation dark site. Because what we're going to go after tonight requires pristine seeing conditions, dark skies, high elevation, and everything has to go just right. Because what we're going after tonight is a lot like what you're seeing down there. We're going after a true black hole. We're talking about the elements of creation itself. Here on this earth, volcanic activity, which was a part of the creation of our earth and up in space, the cosmic forces that bring about things like a black hole. And the black hole we're going after tonight isn't just any black hole, it is a super giant black hole. And what do I mean by a super giant black hole? Shadow, don't go too far down there, buddy. This is another hole, and these holes all are part of a tubular cave complex that connect all underneath it. I'm not brave enough to go down there and go through there, and you really have to have the right equipment. But Shadow wants to, but I'm not gonna let him. I have him on a leash for that very reason. I don't want him going down into these holes, and there are rattlesnakes around here, and I gotta keep him safe. So, a super giant or super massive black hole. It's not an ordinary black hole. That's a black hole that has a magnitude of billions of times our own sun. A super massive black hole is formed when an enormous star comes to the end of its life cycle. And as it uses up its energy and can no longer sustain itself, all of the matter that makes up that star collapses in on itself with such force that it forms a singularity with infinite density. I don't even know what that means, infinite density, but it has a gravitational pull so powerful that nothing can escape once it's crossed over the event horizon. And the event horizon, that's the imaginary circle around that singularity. I mean, it's way out there, but when something crosses over it, well, it's goodbye, because nothing comes out. Nothing, light can't escape, nothing can escape a supermassive black hole, unless, over here, Shadow, let's check this out. Looks like there's some people down in this one. Yeah, we're not going down there, but somebody's down there. People do go down there, and I've been told these tubes go for quite some distance. It sounds like something that would be kind of cool to do. Oh. The black hole, where were we? Yeah, unless, the unless part. Unless the black hole, is really unique. And the black hole we're going after tonight is just such a black hole in that it has a plasma jet coming right out of the middle of it in a straight line reaching out 5,000 light years. And that plasma jet is something that we can study and learn a little bit about what goes on inside these black holes. So this particular black hole is known as M87, and it resides in the center of an enormous elliptical galaxy that is also known as M87. And this galaxy is so big, it has trillions of stars, trillions. Our Milky Way galaxy has approximately 
500 billion stars. 500 billion, that's a lot. This galaxy has trillions. Take a look at that enormous raven <laughs> shadow. I think that raven's bigger than you are, buddy. Tonight, what we're going to attempt to image is Markarian's chain. It's a chain of galaxies, of which M87 is one of the largest and brightest. And we hope that we can capture the galaxy and the plasma jet coming out of the middle. Well, we're back in the truck, Shadow and I, and we are heading up the canyon and to the dark site. Where we're going is called Mountain Meadow Massacre. And I've done a video shooting from there before called An Eerie Night of Astrophotography. If you're interested in that, it's called Mountain Meadow Massacre for a reason. And it's a tragic, horrific reason. Uh, but we're not going to go into that tonight. We're focused on the black hole. So that volcano is more appropriately called a cinder cone because it's one of a number of cinder cones that are part of the same volcanic complex. We'll pass a few more of the cinder cones along the drive to uh, the dark site. All right, little buddy, we're here. Come here, buddy. Come here. I gotta put your coyote vest on you. Up you go. All right, this is coyote country and it's cold. It's gonna be cold out here tonight. So Shadow is gonna be adorned in his full body armor. I have his summer wear and I have his winter wear. This is going to be cold and the winter wear I can't put on him in the summer because he gets too hot. Otherwise I would because it's even that much more protection. Come here little buddy. What do we got going on here? Tracker on you. Got to keep you safe little buddy. I couldn't bear it if anything ever happened to you. Hold on here. Got your tracker on. Hold on. Let's make sure this is charged up. We're charged up. You look good. We're good to go. You look great, Shadow. You look great. There's snow up there, and that's not very much higher than we are. This is high elevation, and look at these skies. Look at these skies. A few little clouds over there, but we're forecasted for clear skies. So the wind is coming from the west northwest. If I step out from behind my truck, you might be able to hear it a little bit. You can see the flags. So the goal is to hide behind my truck. And when I stand right here, it's very quiet and still. And I'm also going to put up that portable observatory tent so you'll have a chance to see that. So I got to set up. When you get out in these remote areas, you always hope you don't forget something. And when you do, you have to improvise. Well, I forgot something. I forgot the extra weight that I need to counterbalance this beast. So what do you do when you improvise? Well, you ever watch the Flintstones? It's a stone. It'll work. It's balanced. <laughs> hey. <laughs> As long as it works. I'm balanced and now I've just got to wait for it to get dark. Uh, but before it does that I'm going to collimate. I want to make sure everything is perfect so I'm going to collimate. Well we're set up and the sun is setting and it has calmed down. Can you see the flags? They're hardly moving. 
It's getting cool. I brought plenty of uh, winter wear in case. I am all balanced and I have a friend that joined me <laughs> who's far more advanced in astrophotography than I am. He's going to help me with my... Uh... He's just talking about my age. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. But he's going to help me with my tracking because uh, I struggle with tracking. Guiding. Guiding. He's going to help me with my guiding because I struggle with guiding. And See what I can do. He gets long, long exposures and I'm not so good at that. But it is beautiful. I brought the portable observatory tent. There's a second part that will go around this, but it's so calm that if the wind doesn't pick up, I'm not gonna bother with it. And then, because I wanna get as much time as possible on this object, I will crawl up there and turn on my little heater and stay warm in my inflatable <laughs> topper. All right, we just gotta wait now for it to get darker. Well, it's turning out to be a beautiful night. There's not a cloud in the sky. And we're getting ready to pull our line and then we'll star a line. I have to wait a little bit for M87 to come up over the horizon. And it's gonna be a little low, but I think we can get it. Okay, let's see what we have going on here. The winds have died down. It's very still. And you can see here, this is called the FWHM filter and the conditions are ideal. My guiding is going better, thanks to my friend Mark. And with a big scope like this, guiding is really important. Now, we have 44 minutes of data so far. When we process this, you'll see this jet better, but you can even see it now. That is a plasma jet, and it is reaching out, as I said earlier, 5,000 light years. It extends out. There you go. That's the jet. Now, M87, this massive galaxy, is a diffuse galaxy. The stars are everywhere and there are trillions of them. So it's a very bright galaxy and very difficult to photograph and capture any detail like you can the Andromeda galaxy. We're just seeing a, a lot of light. It's also 55 million light years away. But in, right in the middle is the super massive black hole. And coming out of it is that jet, that plasma jet. So we're capturing, I'm very excited about that. We're gonna give this as much time as we can get on it and we will come back and take a look again. It's freezing out here. Shadow and I are gonna go get in the truck and stay warm. Well, this is a significant improvement over past nights. Instead of freezing outside, I am inside my cozy little inflatable topper. Got a little cup of hot chocolate going for myself right there. Got a little heater down there, if you can see that. So I'm gonna chill here for a little bit and then go back out and check on the image. I'm really, really happy with the way it's turning out so far. Well, it's the following day. We got home at 8 a.m. And Shadow, you're not even tired, but I am. <laughs> Slept very little in the back of my pickup truck with the inflatable topper, but I got a little bit of sleep. But Shadow and I have been processing this image. Actually, there's two. And the good news is we did capture the plasma jet coming out of the middle of M87, where the black hole resides. Now, I do want to manage your expectations. And that is, we are going to be looking at a diffuse galaxy that is 55 million light years from Earth. By comparison, this is the Andromeda galaxy. The Andromeda galaxy is approximately 2.5 million light years from Earth, and you can see the arms and, you know, a lot of structure. Over here we have, try and get away from the reflection a little bit, this is the Bode's galaxy, this is the Cigar galaxy, and they are about uh, 11 to 12 million light years from Earth. We're going to be looking at a diffuse galaxy with trillions of stars that are not in any particular 
pattern, you know, with arms, but just all around. So it's just brilliantly bright and you can't see any structure, but you can see the plasma jet coming out of it. And that's pretty cool. Let's take a look.